please join me in our call to worship this morning. Although the season of the year may be turning towards autumn, still the poetry of this love song creates a timeless invitation. Hear the voice of the beloved who comes leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. Alone, like a gazelle or a young deer, stands behind that wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the glass. Beloved speaks and calls to us, Arise, my love, my dear one, and come away. For now the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. Well, oh, here, oh, here. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth their sweet fragrance. Arise, O oh love, O oh dear one, and join me. Would you please join in our opening hymn this morning on page 359? Let us love with you, reflect, and 
mirror your perfect love as we gather as your beloved community. This we come and pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, hallowed be thy name. On our earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us the cup of us. We forgive us our debtors. And we send us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord. game. So the what if game starts out by my telling you an imaginary story. It's not true. It's just something I made up. But I want to know in this what if game how this makes you feel. Okay. So here's the first what if. What if you're playing on the school playground and you fall and you scrape your knee and you hobble over to your teacher who is watching all the other children playing and you start to cry as you say, teacher, teacher, I scraped my knee. Now here comes the what if part. What if your teacher looked at you and your bleeding knee and said, oh, I'm sure it'll be okay. How would that make you feel? Not good, yeah. All right, let's try this one. You walk to your friend's house one day and the sun is shining. It's a beautiful morning as you go to play and you're there all day long playing. When it comes time to walk home though, the sky's opened up and it's pouring rain and you don't have any rain boots or any umbrella or raincoat. Your friend is standing in the doorway looking out at the rain pouring down and she says to you, I had a great time today. I hope you get home all right. How would that make you feel? Yeah, pretty bad, huh? I wouldn't want to walk home in that rain. All right, last one. You're in school and it's almost lunchtime and you look in your school bag to see what mom and dad packed you for lunch and there's nothing in there. Uh-oh, they forgot and you don't have anything to eat. So you tell your friend who walks with you to the lunchroom and your friend sits down and he opens his lunch bag and he says, boy, I'll bet you'll be glad to get home so you can eat. How would that make you feel? Yeah, yeah. See, each of these stories, you could have used a little bit of help. Like maybe when you scraped your knee, the teacher could have knelt down and looked at your knee and offered a few words of comfort and promised to have the nurse clean it up when we got back inside. When it started to rain and you had to walk home, Perhaps your friend could have offered you at least some kind of rain gear, or maybe suggested that you call your parents and see if they could pick you up. When you didn't have a lunch, maybe your friend could have shared half his sandwich with you just so that you'd have a little something to eat, or gone and told the teachers that you had nothing so they could find something for you. In our Bible story today, which I'm gonna read in just a few minutes, it tells us that Christians must do things. It's not enough to just wish good things for other people, but we have to do things to make good things happen. Now, you probably heard the song, they'll know that we are Christians by our love. 
We have to show our love by doing the things that we do to help other people out. We call that ministry or service or mission work. It's important to get together as a Christian family and to sing and to pray and to read the Bible because that makes us stronger in our faith and it gives us confidence, but it helps us not only to know who and who, where, who we are and who God is, but it shouldn't stop there. We have to do things. We have to make sure that we take care of what we say that we care about. And so I'm going to challenge you this week to do something special for somebody who may need some extra help. You get to decide what that something is, okay? All right. Now, I have one more what if question for everyone. What if no one ever told you that God loves you? That would be a sad thing, wouldn't it? which is why it's important for us to not only tell other people that God loves them, but to show them. Let us pray. Dear God, you have shown us how much you love us by sending your son Jesus to live here and to die on the cross and to rise again so that we can be forgiven and be with you forever. Not only does your word tell us that you love us, but your actions show us just how much. Thank you for this gift. Amen. So today I'm going to read a scripture lesson from the book of James. Way in the very, very back of our Bible. And I forgot my Bible, so I'm going to read, try to read these tiny words. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen and slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at them themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. May the Lord add a blessing to the readings this morning. Would you please join me in our time of confession and assurance of pardon? Dear God, you call us to be doers of the word, not hearers only. You call us to love the world with your passion and to let that love be expressed in justice, forgiveness, and peace. Forgive us when our hearts are constricted with fear, and do not let your transforming grace open us to the world of the church. Forgive us when we honor you only with our lips and not with our flesh. Holy One in Christ, you have shown us the way into your beloved community of mercy, love, and peace, in which you are making all things new. We come to affirm our covenant and sacred promise to be in loving relationship with you. Thank you for giving us life. Open us, body, mind, and spirit to your truth. Fill us with your grace so that we can fall in love with your world and to offer and experience forgiveness, reconciliation, and hope.
as we think about our offering, we're reminded to offer our experience, forgiveness, reconciliation, and hope. The church requires the finances to keep things going, but it also requires of us our gifts and our talents and our doing. Thank you for those who send your offerings in. The offering plate is in the back of the room for those who desire to leave an offering here. And let me just say a blessing over the offering. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the many ways in which you have blessed us in our lives, blessed us with gifts and talents, with special being in our churches and in our communities and in our homes. Let these offerings that we bring before you be acceptable in your sight. May they be blessed by you in the Bible. Use the illness as we pray.
Thank you for joining us on this Sabbath morning.